okay uh, suppose uh, some uh, uh, drop of blood comes out say let us say and they will just exaggerate it like that um, totally broken and uh, lots of blood based bleeding like that that is overstatement uh, here example uh, taken from shakespeare here is the smell of blood still all the perfumes of arabia will not sweeten this little hand this is a typical uh, lines written by william shakespeare original writings of shakespeare see the sample enjoy the sample because it will take it will take time for you to uh, read and enjoy shakespeare's original plays these are all uh, some samples here is the smell of blood still this is context i will tell you uh, i will take this opportunity to uh, introduce shakespeare to you uh, a few things here is the smell of blood still this th these are the words of macbeth macbeth after killing the king who is a visitor to his house who had come there to honor macbeth to reward to acknowledge macbeth he would have come there but lady macbeth that is wife of macbeth will tempt macbeth look here macbeth this is very good opportunity if you kill the king then nobody will question your authority you will be the king so don't miss the opportunity he is sleeping after a banquet after a banquet he is sleeping there in your own in our own house go there to kill him the next morning we will you will become the king half heartedly or zero heartedly this macbeth will go to his uh, the chamber and will just carry a dagger and with the dagger he will kill him and uh, with the blood stained dagger on hands he will come out of the chamber the king is dead macbeth is out he wants to wash his hands and blood stain blood smell is there and that guilty conscience kills him after all he is his king he is a warrior who has to take daggers against the enemies of the king but here he has just killed the king who has paid a visit to his house as a visitor as a guest that is not hospitality so that guilty conscience kills him after killing the king macbeth's conscience kills him therefore he says here is the smell of blood still even after having washed my hands the smell of blood is still with me in the room if i want to do away with the blood stain still i mean smell and all all the perfumes of arabia arabia is a muslim country it is very well known for perfumes the best perfumes of the world now will be available in arabia those days that is 17th, 17th century <coughs> sorry all the perfumes of arabia will not sweeten this little hand so it is such that, that is <coughs> sorry that is uh, uh, the magnitude okay that is the magnitude of the crime he has done not that uh, smell of blood <coughs> we'll continue and similarly i think you would have enjoyed this and then what happens you know this um, lady macbeth uh, kills herself and this is a tragedy one of the four major tra tragedies of shakespeare one is macbeth the other one is othello the other one is king lear the other one is the fourth one is uh, hamlet hamlet uh, king lear uh, othello and uh, macbeth this uh, king lear these four are the four are the tragedies of uh, shakespeare um, and the second uh, example given in the on the slide you know just see oh hamlet thou has cleft my heart in twain okay who oh, hamlet thou has cleft my <coughs> heart in twain this is uh, a conversation between prince hamlet and hamlet's mother you know actually 
uh, King Hamlet, I already told you, King Hamlet had a brother, Claudius. <coughs> Claudius killed, poured poison in the ears of uh, Hamlet, King Hamlet, and kills him because he covers the throne. He wants to conquer the kingdom. Therefore, by secretly killing the king, that is his own brother, he becomes the king himself and immediately he marries the king's wife. Okay? So, this is, these are the two crimes done by Claudius, that is King Hamlet's brother. At that time, Prince Hamlet is outside the country. After uh, hearing the death of his father, he comes back to the, I mean, uh, his country, that is um, Hamlet returns to his country, that is Denmark. Uh, and then uh, the conversation is there, Hamlet becomes mad. Um, mad means, you know, he pretends to be mad because uh, Hamlet's uh, ghost visits Prince Hamlet and tells his son, Hamlet, I did not die naturally. Your uncle, that is Claudius, killed me when I was sleeping in the garden. He poured poison in my ears and I died. Uh, that even uh, my death actually, I'm not, uh, I'm not totally, uh, so much unhappy, but my dear wife, that is your mother, immediately, uh, she was totally not loyal to me. Uh, she immediately married my brother immediately. That means all her love is waste. It's uh, false and fake. False and fake, you can just remember, the, recall these words introduced in the last poem. False and fake. She was not true to me. She was not true to me, loyal to me. Uh, and then, uh, so, uh, his, the, the ghost, the ghost that is King Hamlet in the form of a ghost comes and tells Prince Hamlet. So, till then, till that, still since that moment, Prince Hamlet starts hating, disliking his own mother. So, the behavior of uh, Prince Hamlet torments, disturbs his mother. So, on one such occasion, she says, O oh, Hamlet, thou hast cloaked my heart in twain. In twain means old English for two. Okay? And thou hast cloaked my heart means you have divided. Hast means have. Thou means you. That is Shakespeare English, old English. That is 17th century, early part of 17th century. You have divided, broken my heart into two by your words and by your behavior. These are the words of Hamlet's mother to her son. Okay? It is not actually breaking the heart into two. That is an exaggeration. That is, you have hurt me, my son, you have hurt me. In order to magnify the effect, okay, she says, you have broken my heart into two like that. So, this is hyperbole. And another example, again from uh, Hamlet, I loved Ophelia. 40,000 brothers could not with all their quantity of love make up the sum. Sum means total there. I loved Ophelia. Ophelia is the lover of uh, Prince Hamlet. I stands for Prince Hamlet. Prince Hamlet loved Ophelia like that. Ophelia is brother to Laertes. And I loved Ophelia. 40,000 brothers could not with all their quantity of love make up the sum. See how, when you can, uh, where can you find 40,000 brothers? 40,000 brothers, love of 40,000 brothers, that is hyperbole, okay? That is, Prince Hamlet's love to Ophelia is so, so, so much that is not equal to even 40,000 brothers could not with all their quantity of love, okay? So, this is the kind of hyperbole. Ophelia and uh, Prince Hamlet, they are lovers. Uh, they don't marry rather. And uh, once... Uh, Prince Hamlet's mother marries Claudius, that is his father's brother. Prince Hamlet starts disliking, hating the entire women kind. All women will be like that. He generalizes like that. So after generalizing this, he starts hating Ophelia also. Ophelia, you will also be like my mother only. You will also cheat me once. Actually, you won't be loyal to me. This kind of uh, conclusion he just arrives at. 
and from that moment he slowly he just torments ophelia and finally ophelia will fall in a pond and she will die there this is a tragedy everybody will die, will die but his father's death will be avenged by prince hamlet so again coming to the point i loved ophelia so much and that love 40000 brothers could not with all their quantity of love make up the sum so this is hyperbole typical examples all taken from shakespeare and then next please and then uh, apostrophe apostrophe is that is another figure of speech another poetic device that is uh, a direct address to the dead person or the person who is absent or to a personified object or idea apostrophe when you just uh, see look at the example then it will be clear to you milton thou shouldst be living at this hour that is milton's friend is addressing milton milton is no more milton is dead so looking at milton imagining milton is there in front of him he just says these words milton thou shouldst be living you should not be you should be living at this hour to see these atrocities present day atrocities you should be living at this hour that is uh, uh, the declaration or uh, the statement uh, by milton's friend milton thou should be what is what is happening here milton's friend okay milton's friend is addressing milton but milton is no more there he is not there so this is apostrophe and then again second example oh death where is thy sting where is their biting sting sting is bite oh death where is thy sting he is addressing not a human being not an animal even animal he is not a human he is not addressing a human being he is addressing death okay how can i just address or birth no i cannot address here that is the is addressing oh death the poet writes like this as if the speaker addresses death oh death where is the sting because the death actually has taken away somebody's life precious life so he is asking oh death where is the sting where is your sting how did you kill how did you kill where is your like that this is called the apostrophe again he is addressing solitude oh solitude where are the charms that sages have seen in thy face okay solitude means loneliness solitude loneliness loneliness and the sages you know are together they go together sages are supposed to spend lot of the time in solitude alone in isolation okay that is asceticism they will just separate themselves and they will roam in forests and jungles without the human company and they will spend like that that is called solitude so solitude that loneliness is supposed to give charm to sages not for human beings not for social beings like us here addressing solitude oh solitude where are the charms that sages have seen in thy face okay and uh, I, uh, though i am sol- i am i am alone that loneliness kills me that solitude kills me i want to meet my friends and people but the same solitude used to be very charming to sages but that charm i am not able to get from this solitude so this is a kind of presentation okay oh solitude this is called apostrophe three typical examples to highlight apostrophe next please and then uh, another uh, very familiar uh, um, figure of speech is personification personification is a noun form person from person all these words come person personify personification personify is the verb personification is noun person you know actually personification is an idea or an animal or a thing is human qualities okay persons are separate things are inanimate and all now uh, now the idea idea elevate uh, animal or highlight a thing such human qualities to these things that is personification okay for example 
in the text there is a poem machines like that and uh, it's, uh, it's a poem and you find all uh, sentences uh, like this only all prose won't seem to be a poem it will it will be it will look like uh, prose only uh, i mean receive the text and we just go through the poem uh, we can pull and haul and push and lift and drive okay so many ands just see you can you can we can pull and haul and push and lift and drive one two three four four ands are there that is another figure of speech i will come to you later now uh, he, he is addressing machine machines are the statement is uttered by made by machines machines how can machines speak that is you are humanizing machine the poet actually wants to humanize machines that is give importance to machines the machines are superiority over human being machines are occupying a very vital place in the society in our betterment of life so we can pull we machines can pull and haul and push and lift and drive here human quality is attached to machine so this is called personification machines are personified as human beings the second example locker holding both your sides locker holding both your sides only somebody can locker how can locker hold both your sides here actually inanimate is here locker is personified as a human being so that locker holds both the sides of a lady okay again this is person and then next example pride goeth forth and hearts back grand and gay but cometh back on foot and begs its way okay pride that is pride therefore don't be proud pride goeth forth on horse back initially initially first you know maybe superficial victory may be there instantly that victory may be there for pride pride goes forth on horse back okay? royal going grand and gay grand very grand manner and gay happy but ultimately what happens to pride it comes back on foot not on horse and begs not grand and gay begging its way even for begging its way you know it is coming back therefore don't proud if you are proud you will fall down okay the, here also pride is personified as a person pride you cannot expect pride going and coming horseback and all but here pride goeth forth on horseback it is personified as a human being this is personification a figure of speech and then uh, next figure of speech is alliteration alliteration is repetition of the same consonant sound in successive or nearby words okay repetition of the same consonant sound consonant sound consonant sound is different from consonants okay there are in um, spoken english we say consonants and vowels there are 44 uh, symbols 44 sounds are there in english language what if incidentally i would like to give this information to you consonants and vowels uh, in english there are 44 speech sounds 44 speech sounds and out of 44 speech sounds 24 consonant sounds are there 24 consonant sounds and 20 vowel sounds are there out of 20 vowel sounds 12 are pure vowels and 8 are diphthongs okay so 12 pure vowels 8 diphthongs and 24 consonant sounds so consonant sound is different from consonant how many letters are there actually we got 26 letters english has got 24 26 letters but 44 sounds there is no one to one correspondence match between english sound and english sign that is symbol so that is letter okay uh, for example sometimes we say consist c o n s i s t consist we say 
but at the same time cinema c i n e m a cinema so here cinema begins with c consist begins with c the in first in cinema it is is sound in uh, consistent the c has got ik sound so consonants 24 consonants are there but we have 21 consonant letters only 26 letters uh, five vowels are there and uh, 26 minus 5 is 21 consonants okay try right, coming back to this alliteration <coughs> repetition of the same consonant sound not consonant letter consonant sounds in successive or nearby words for example we can print and plow and weave and heave and and hear and write okay um, we can print <coughs> we can uh, print and plow and uh, weave and heat and light okay what is this see green letters print and plow ip sound ip ip print and plow consecutive words beginning with the same this is creation and then we can see red letter red color w e we can print and plow and weave and heat and light here w e v that that's consonant sound v we can there it is v weave and heat and light so here repetition sound same consonant sound successively are nearby words mostly in the same line okay so two the first sentence and first line and the second example summer of life she is in spring i think we can just recall this line from the latest poem we just saw today in the first session the summer of life she is ready to see in spring the summer the brightness the brightness of life she is a woman is ready to see in spring that is she is quite optimistic about it okay and no thorns do any harm to the lady um the summer of uh, life she is ready to see in, in this line summer begins with this and uh, to see in spring to see also it is see first letter first sound is this see and in spring the spring the word spring begins with this the for summer first letter first sound is and then see first sound is and then spring first consonant sound is therefore this is example for alliteration you may be wondering why i have not included she is ready there also there is yes begins with yes but it begins with yes letter only but it begins with the sound is ish it is ish not is 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 different from ish is is for consonant sound in english is is another consonant sound in is and is are friend therefore i have deleted is from this s group is group third example full pay them fi dai father rice i have not highlighted if 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 in all the words full pay them fi dai father rice uh, can you recall this this is a, a sentence from um, shakespeare once again from the tempest the tempest you won't find this original line in the text actually from the pro in your, in your textbook full fathom fai dai father lies this is uh, the ship wreckage is there i will just bring you the context uh, the ship wreck ship wreckage is there the ship wrecks because of uh, prosperous magic and the ship wreckage is there and then ferdinand is a first fellow to leap into the sea okay and he reaches the shore he reaches the shore and he thinks that his father king of naples gonzalo everybody is gone so he is totally lamenting the loss of all these people everybody on board is dead he thinks 
and the aerial actually has been inspected by Prospero to take Ferdinand to Miranda, that is in their cave. So, Ariel engages Ferdinand and Ariel is a playful, is a funny. Therefore, his, his mood is totally lamentation, sorrowfulness, whereas Ariel is joking now. Now, she says, where is my father, where is my father? That is a lamentation made by Ferdinand. Where is my father? I have lost my father. That is, Claudius is gone. Where is he? And uh, Ariel says, Ariel, Ariel knows that his father is not dead. Ariel is not dead. Ariel is not dead, he knows. But still, in order to aggravate, just a joke, you know, says, full fathom by thy father lies. Thy father, your father. Your father, that is Claudius. Lies, is sleeping, or is there. And where? In the ocean, into the ocean. How deep? 15 feet deep. How do you arrive at 15 feet? Full fathom five. Fathom means three feet. So three feet into five, that is 15 feet. Full 15 feet depth, your father, that is Ferdinand's father is there. After death, you now the body will go down. Your father, your father is lying safely under 15 feet depth. Don't worry. So this is uh, the funny attitude of uh, Ariel, make, joking. Full fathom by thy father. This is the context coming to this alliteration. Full begins with if. Fathom begins with if. Five begins with if. Father begins with if. Okay. If, if consecutively this if. If sound comes, this is a kind of a little repetition of the same consonant sound in successive or nearby words. Okay. And then uh, next, epithet is actually adjective. Epithet is adjective, whatever is attribute is adjective. Whatever is just attached is called epithet, adjective. Uh, definition. An adjective or a phrase expressing the characteristic, quality of the person, nature of the person or the thing. Okay. Adjective or an adjective or a phrase expressing the characteristic of the person or the thing. For example, grumble family. What is grumble family? The family will be always grumbling. Family is not a normal family, it is not a nice family, it is a grumbling family, always complaining, complaining, complaining. There is another poem included in your syllabus in the text, we will just see it later on. Grumble family and then complaining street, what is complaining street? Complaining street, uh, the street, how can you just expect street to complain? How can you expect the street to complain? The complaining street. The street complaining means the people who are dwelling in the street will be complaining. They are bad people. They are of the nature. They will just complain. Okay. So the street complaining means the street is not complaining, but the people who are residing in the street, they actually complain. That is complaining street. So this is complaining is the epithet. Grumble. Grumble is another epithet. It is a kind of adjective. If it is strict adjective, grumbling family we will say. Grumble is noun and family another noun. Grumble family is a maybe a compound noun. But actually just like complaining state, it should be grumbling family. Grumble family, complaining state. So this is epithet or adjective. Now more than this epithet, epithet is more or less it is adjective. And coming to this transferred epithet, the epithet is transferred from one noun to another noun. Okay? That, that is self-explanatory. Transferred epithet. Epithet, adjective. Adjective for one noun is shifted to another noun. Okay? That is the definition. An adjective or an epithet transferred from the noun to another noun in the same sentence. Okay? For example, he passed a sleepless night. What do you mean by past a sleepless night? You just do away with you, forget about he passed a. What is sleepless night? Can you expect night to sleep? Who is actually sleepless? The person is sleepless. 
but sleepless night means now night is the noun sleepless is the adjective so sleepless he passed a night that is the actual thing so sleepless he that is that adjective is shifted from he to night okay so he passed a sleepless night this is the epithet transferred from he to night for example ram passed a sleepless night ram passed a sleepless night means actually who was sleepless ram so instead of ram sleepless ram passed a night the poet says he passed a sleepless night the so sleepless adjective shifted from ram to night that is called the transferred epithet okay and then another example the plowman homeward plods his weary way okay the plowman homeward plods his weary way another example for alliteration okay just now we saw what a uh, figure of speech is the plowman homeward homeward plods his way plowman first sound is ip and the plods the first sound is ip the four ip ip plowman plods so in this is alliteration consonant sound repeating successively now coming back to this transferred epithet how it is transferred epithet here the plowman homeward plants is weary way what is weary way underlined is weary way way is path weary how way can become tired or weary whoever is walking long way is supposed to be i mean tired and weak but the weary the plowman is weary the plowman is tired by walking 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 and throughout the day has worked and he has become totally tired he is not able to walk properly and just like he as he walked in the morning morning may be fresh and all now evening after having worked for so many hours he has become very tired and he is walking with the tiredness the plowman homeward plods his weary way plod means walking with a difficulty this another line taken from a poem the plowman homeward plods his weary way so the plowman weary weary plowman instead of saying weary plowman the plowman homeward plods his weary way weary adjective is shifted transferred from plowman to way okay another noun way is also noun there night also noun there so weary shifted to way okay so this is transferred epithet typical example then the other day i told you about three classes subordinate classes uh, have got three functions i can, i think you can recall that idea uh, there are uh, uh, nominal class adverbial class adjectival class three types of classes are there as you remember okay uh, nominal class is that of a noun and adverbial class that of uh, an adverb and relative class that of an adjective a relative class does the function of an adjective okay i told you the other day examples uh, i think um, i told you for relative class relative class is adjective class another name for relative class is adjective class uh, this uh, example um, i i told you the dog that bites does not bark i think you can remember my wife who lives in kadalur is a smoker my life my wife who lives in kadalur is a smoker i i told you the difference between putting a comma after my wife and not putting a comma after wife the meaning actually differs drastically the meaning difference will be there okay my wife comma who lives in kadalur is a smoker that means my wife is habituated for smoking but without the comma my wife my wife who is a who is in kadalur is a smoker means my kadalur wife is a smoker okay the meaning is drastically and the grave difference will be there so i told you about the relative class here uh, you have uh, some eight uh, sentences eight uh, relative classes a person who makes beer is somebody okay a person who makes beer is a person who makes beer is somebody okay here who makes beer is a relative class 
who steals things is a relative class who writes about plays and films is a relative class these are all defining relative class defines relative class okay who is that that's a kind of uh, uh, i mean uh, challenge you take it up a challenge uh, some eight uh, people are there tea totaler theater goer linguist brewer playwright thief reviewer atheist opposite of theist thief atheist a person who makes beer who is he you find out the right person in the second column okay and similarly you just take it up a person who writes about place 